Welcome back. Strategic voting, choosing the lesser of two evils, even liking a local candidate but hating the leader. All of these things create a great deal of conflict in the minds of voters, and our next three guests would like to help you resolve some of that conflict by presenting alternatives to the major parties. Joining me tonight are Paul McCleaver from the Freedom Party, Frank DeJong from the Green Party, and Liz Rowley representing the Communist Party. Welcome to you all. You didn't get in on the leaders' debate. This isn't probably a satisfying alternative, but we're going to try and get you out in front of the voters tonight anyways. Liz Rowley, mm -hmm. the Communist Party actually has elected people in this province yes. in the past. In fact, in this riding we're sitting in right now, what, are, what message are you trying to bring to Ontario voters and why should they vote for you in the next, the next election tomorrow? Well, the Communist Party is, uh, is fighting for real change, not just choose change, but real change. We're afraid that the Liberals are going to be porting a Tory agenda the same way that the uh, Chrétien Liberals ported the, the uh, agenda of Mulroney of free trade and the GST. So and what are the uh, issues you are promising real change on? Well, we'd like, well, a whole range of issues. We think that in order to save social programs, for example, that there's going to have to be a big public investment in social programs, and that'll have to come from taxing large corporations, the ones that are now paying 8.5%, uh, thanks to the Tory government. So we want to see taxes increased on corporations, decreased on uh, individuals, and that money used for public investment into uh, public education, uh, public health care, and so on. We want the we want the uh, P3 hospital deals to be cancelled. We want public uh, Medicare, not private uh, public partnership, which is just a euphemism for privatization. Uh, we want to see proportional representation, obviously, and I think one of your guests we'll is going to be talking yes. to that. Yeah. In terms of minimum wage, very quickly. Twelve dollar an hour minimum wage. That's the poverty line. First day you line. take office. Pardon? First day you take office. Well, we weren't going to be taking office. We only have six uh, candidates. But yes, a, a government which is responsive to uh, to the Ontario public will implement uh, a, a sizable increase okay. in the minimum wage. Who do your colleague, Mr. McKeever, you're from the Free Freedom Party. Okay. What is the Freedom <clears throat> Party? What do you stand for, and why should people vote for you? Well, effectively, we're Ontario's remaining party of common sense. Um, you know, we've had a real shift in the PC party to a red Tory agenda from the blue Tory agenda. Uh, Freedom Party still offering uh, market-based solutions to those people who think that that's the way to go. Some key policies, then. Uh, to take auto insurance, for example. We have three parties, none of whom will criticize the other, about the fact that we have a failing, no-fault style of auto uh, insurance. In the United States, that's been ad uh, adopted by about 24 states and then abandoned by 12 uh, since their adoption. Uh, the reason is that under no fault, insurance rates go up. People who are not at fault end up carrying some of the blame and therefore some of the, uh, in the premium increases. And we think that's just wrong. We want to go back to the tort-based system in which only the at-fault driver pays. Uh, take another example. Uh, you know, we're, we're opposed to queue jumping. Uh, in healthcare. However, that's because we're opposed to queues. We think that there ought to be more competition, not less, with the government monopoly in healthcare. So we would offer, uh, or allow rather, competition both in terms of the insurance plan, you could have uh, an alternative to the OHIP plan, or you could buy the OHIP plan. And you could also choose uh, which hospitals, which providers you wanted to have. How many candidates do you have running? We have 24 candidates running this time. Okay. Mr. DeJong, Mr. DeYoung, sorry. <laughs> Mr. DeYoung from the Green Party, you're running the most candidates of all the smaller parties. In fact, you've almost got a full slate short of one. Why should people vote Green and what will they get if they do? Well, we, we're advocating that people take a good look at all areas of provincial jurisdiction at what the Green Party has to say in health care, education, transportation, agriculture, electricity, etc. And uh, we have put together a platform that, uh, that uh, it's basically a, a platform that, that uh, would is a way out of the log jams that we are in in almost all these areas. We think there's some serious reevaluation re needs to happen. In healthcare, for instance, we think we should have a wholesale shift of resources into prevention and lifestyle and expanding uh, OHIP to cover homeopathy, naturopathy, and chiropractic, etc., and get, have more uh, nurse practitioners and get doctors on rostering. Uh, in order to reduce our health care budget. In education, we'd like to expand the public and diversify the public school system by offering funding to Montessori, Waldorf, and other religions, independent schools, even homeschooling. So you'd, ex you'd extend they, the Tory tax credit? Well, we'd like to get rid of the private school tax credit, but extend the, ex expand and diversify the public school system. Education is a consideration for parents and communities. We want to give those parents and communities choices. And so we'd like to offer them... These aren't the issues you'd normally associate with the Green Party. You think more sort of trees and grass and water and air and that sort of stuff. These are these are more structuralist. Are they coming out of somewhere outside they're of the coming, Yeah, they're coming Where out of coming from? they're coming out of a, a values of decentralization and um, and giving people choices. People deserve choices. 
and, you know, uh, in, in, in electricity, for instance, we think that we should take the cap off electricity to allow electricity to rise to its natural level, six to eight cents a kilowatt hour, and then allow people to invest in con conservation so and alternatives. So what's the difference guys? I'm, I'm hearing a very similar set of values being expressed. I think we'll get to the, mm -hmm. the Communist Party, which I think might have something to say about this in a second. Mm -hmm. well, Frank and I uh, agree on getting rid of that cap. I think we both agree that it's a disastrous thing. It discourages uh, conservation and, in fact, puts the cost of consumption by industry and by commercial consumers, which is two-thirds of all energy consumption in Ontario, onto the backs of people who consume the least. Uh, if you consume none, you pay a higher kilowatt hour price than anybody else. See, right now we're paying for electricity out of general revenue, a billion and a half dollars so far. And so, you know, the Green Party, we are more right of the Ernie Eves Conservatives because they put this cap on. They don't believe in the market. Now, that, that said, though, I think we'd be afraid of the market. Let me, let me get the, the Communist Party in on this discussion. Well, what would you do with hydro prices? We think that uh, that uh, what we need is public power and it's deregulation that has caused the huge spikes in, uh, would you, in costs. Would you sustain the cap? We, the cap is going to is 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 a phony thing, anyways, because it's going to come off, and when it does, people are going to see oh, their sorry. rates skyrocket, and they're also going to see so their, they're going to pay yes through the no. taxes. But we'd like to. See, we know that the, the rate is going to rise somewhat. But we would like to see a, 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 a east-west power grid that would serve the needs of Canadians first, and we'd like it to be public this power public and, power and regulated. Thing. It doesn't matter whether electrical generation is private, public, or a church, or a school, or a oh, farm, sure or a cottage. Absolutely, it does. Not it's, at all. It's, it's, it's power. The it's, as long as it's being, green power, it's the, that's it's the, the most prices important that thing. Are, it's the supply that's being manipulated, and that's what's jacking up the prices. Uh, actually, that's, and that's, Adam, I think, where we would differ. Uh, I don't agree that Frank's a, a right-wing party. I think he's quite left-wing, actually. But he's packaged it himself a little bit right-wing. And, and I think if you look at the differences, we're saying in Freedom Party that you must have more supply in a greater uh, number of places, but smaller stations, of privately privately owned. But we can not reduce our amount of electricity by 90% if we do aggressive conservation no, technology. No growth comes from uh, cutting a single loaf of bread into smaller and smaller pieces. Well, we need to decouple fossil fuel use with economic growth. Okay. We can do all kinds of economic growth. Well, we need more hydroelectric power. No, we, we also do need. We yes, we do, and enough. we need. Well, you don't we think we do? I think we're behaving just like the other three. <laughs> <laughs> just a well, second. We also, we very also quickly, need. I want to uh, bring this back to the city of Toronto. I want to talk very quickly about whether or not you'd be in favor of social housing. Yes, absolutely. Yes. How many units? We need a hundred thousand units up. over five years. Okay, social housing. Yes or no? No, that is not a provincial responsibility. Okay, social housing, yes or no? And the responsible to make we, Green Party, the political, the government should be responsible for uh, make sure everyone has adequate housing. But would we'd like build, the market, no, not the government, but the market would build it if we give them green incentives, which means get the tax off the building and put it exclusively on the land. And one last very quick thing, gas tax for transit, yes or no? Um, we'd like to have an equalization of the, uh, you know, Yes shift. or no? Basically, yes. If How you much? Must say. I don't know the answer to that. Yes or no, gas tax going dedicated to transit? Not a dedicated tax, not a gas tax, a, a broader base tax, a sales tax. Okay, yes or yes, no? Yes, 50% of gas, gas uh, tax and uh, road user taxes, including licenses, should be returned to municipalities. They need a new financial deal, that's pretty clear. And this I got a break. An I got a break, and that. I think I think you'll agree why the break is important. Coming up after the break, we're going to talk about getting proportional representation established mm -hmm. in this province, so that maybe I'm talking to three MPPs next time instead of three people who are on the outside looking in too many too many times hey. in these debates. Elections not till tomorrow. <laughs> okay, there we have it. Thanks for joining us. From the Communist Party, it was Liz Rowley. From the Green Party, Frank DeYoung, and from the Freedom Party, Paul McKeever. Thanks very much. Don't go away. We have more on how ele election laws might be able to be changed. Stay tuned.